everyone. Happy Sunday. This thing. Maybe I'm just the shortest person on the weather team, and that's why this thing never wants to be the correct height for me. I got Brad, KJ, Larry. Goodness gracious. Uh, happy Sunday, everyone. Uh, it is definitely a beautiful start to the day across the area. Even without the clouds, it was very comfortable as we kicked off our Sunday morning. Uh, this is kind of an overview of today's forecast. You know, we got Panthers, last day of the President's Cup, and of course, a look ahead to what's going on in the tropics. So let's get right to it, shall we? Uh, again, a nice start to the day, right? We had some clouds, but not too bad out there. Uh, there is some light rain moving through parts of the Charlotte area. This is mainly the Southern Peak Piedmont down toward the sand hills. We have a kind of a complicated setup, right? So we have dry air close to the ground. But some of these clouds streaming in uh, coming in from the north and west ahead of our next cold front. Now, oftentimes when you see low cloud cover, you can get some of that light rain, some of that drizzle out there. Uh, but oftentimes too, when the dry air kind of combines with that, it evaporates before reaching the ground. So it's definitely something that I'm watching closely to see some of the, that some of that light rain will reach the ground, uh, but I definitely don't think that it's a widespread rain event, right, as we're kicking off your Sunday. So overall, not too shabby, right, across most of the Piedmont. Uh, now again, cloud cover, but we'll see some sunshine this afternoon. So definitely don't let the clouds maybe deter you from trying to get out and about. Let's see if these graphics want to progress. Let's go. There we go. Uh, Panthers game, of course, today. Panthers back at home against the New Orleans Saints. Go Panthers. Keep pounding. Uh, temperatures going to be right around the 70s by about 11 noon time, and then we'll eventually reach the lower 80s. Uh, if you are outside right now and you're looking at the clouds and thinking, oh, are these ever going to break? I do expect them to break at times, and I do expect us to get some sunshine. So remember, too, right, to have the sunscreen. All that good stuff if you're heading to the game. I definitely don't think these clouds will be a complete day ruiner. And you can kind of see that on our closer look at future casts, kind of how we see those breaks right in the way. Uh, so here we are by about 2 o'clock. Ahead of this cold front, I do expect the opportunity for a few rain showers and, of course, thunderstorms as well, especially up toward the mountains and foothills. Um, there, they could also see the opportunity for some wind gusts in excess of about 50 or so miles an hour. That's not really a significant risk here, but it is something I did want to note. It's a low end risk for some of those gusty winds. Uh, but what's interesting, right, is we don't have a lot of daytime heating, so the lightning threat is extremely, extremely low for today of uh, the Panthers game and, of course, up to the north, too. So I paused that there at 2 o'clock just to kind of show you what areas I'm talking about. This is mainly north of the I-40 corridor. And again, you can see that primary risk going to be some gusty wind. So I keep an eye out for that. If you live in um, Alexander County, northern Iredell County, over toward Caldwell, Burke County, uh, as well as the mountain counties, Ashwatauga and Avery, if you have maybe outdoor furniture, right? Like I have little chairs, you know, that sit on my little and I just bring them inside just in case. Kind of will uh, ease your mind, right, if you're going to be out and about later on in the day. Uh, so here we are at Futurecast. You can see at 2 o'clock again, pause at that same time period. As we progress throughout the afternoon, you'll see some of those showers making their way further south. We kind of sit on about a 20 to 30 percent chance of rain today. It's definitely not a widespread threat, but there is an opportunity to see some of these showers. I just don't expect a ton of them because we still have really dry air close to the ground. So I think we're going to be hard pressed to get a lot of moderate to even heavy rainfall. Uh, very similar overall setup, I would say, to what we had Thursday, the first day of the President's Cup, where it was a little bit more muggy. We had that front roll through. And as it did, we had some downpours, but it wasn't any kind of crazy activity. And then you'll see we're largely uh, drying out as we get closer to the latter half here of the day. Uh, 8, 9, 10 o'clock, you can see the clouds mixing out. And of course, should make for a nice little sunset. So that's the local forecast the next uh, 24 hours or so. So let's talk what's going on in the tropics right now. Uh, here's a look at our high resolution satellite at Tropical Storm Ian right now. Uh, the latest update coming in at 8 a.m. Still a tropical storm with wind sustained at about 50 miles an hour. But what's expected to happen later on today is that this storm is going to go through what's called rapid intensification. Rapid intensification is when the winds gain 35 miles per hour or more within a 24 hour period. So at 50 miles per hour now, if Ian were to get up to 85 miles per hour, right, that's making it a category one hurricane. And the rapid intensification, right, it's 35 miles per hour or higher. So it's not to say that it couldn't get stronger, but there's a lot of I would say favorable things in Ian's path right now for the potential to strengthen. And one of those is really, really warm ocean waters in both the Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico. So every single hurricane season, right? When there's a storm that precedes another storm, 
what happens is you have what's called upwelling. So, right, a storm passes, let's say, through the Gulf of Mexico. And as it does so, we get colder air from further down that is upwelled because of the storm's upward movement. So a hurricane, a tropical storm, low pressure, we come inward at the surface and upward aloft. So as we see that same motion along our oceans, right, it makes sense that the colder air would kind of come up and then disperse out at the top. So it's called upwelling, right? So oftentimes when you have a lot of active storms on a map like this, where it says it has the ocean water temps, you might see some pockets of blue or some pockets of even yellow, which indicates some cooler water. But unfortunately, we haven't really seen a lot of activity this season, especially in these areas in the Gulf of Mexico and in the Caribbean. So the ocean water temperatures are really warm and also largely untapped. You can see these temps from coastal Texas all the way to the Florida coast. I'm the topping out at 88 miles per, or 88 degrees that is. Because tropical storms and hurricanes only need 79 degrees or higher. So the warmer it is, then, of course, the warmer you're going to see uh, the temperatures, and that's more opportunity to see kind of that opportunity, right, to rapidly intensify. So that's one of the things that's going on right now is that the fact that the ocean water temperatures are really, really warm there. The second thing is, at least right now, sorry, put my graph, please. Graphics just don't want to change today. Uh, it's moving through an area with really low wind shear. So wind shear works by helping rip storms apart. When you have a, a tropical storm or a hurricane, there's low pressure at the top, but when that low gets displaced by wind shear ripping the storms apart at the top, what happens is it displaces that vertical motion. So instead of like this, it looks like this. And that allows for an opportunity, not just for storms to weaken, but also an inability to strengthen. So wind shear, bad for hurricanes and tropical storms. Right now, there's really low wind shear in the Caribbean and the Southern Gulf of Mexico. But later on, notice as we get closer to Tuesday and eventually onward toward Wednesday and Thursday, the storm is expected to move into areas with much higher wind shear, which could, even if the storm stayed on the exact path that it's currently on, the National Hurricane Center cone, let's say, hypothetically was right on target, the storm could weaken right before a potential landfall. And actually that's been reflected in the latest forecast track from the National Hurricane Center. The next forecast track will come out at 11 a.m. So we have about 30 minutes. And you can actually see, if you look really closely at your screen, Friday morning, that weakening right before landfall. A uh, really historic storm that actually did this was Katrina. It was a Category 5 hurricane at its peak intensity, but it did weaken to a Category 3 before landfall. It still was a major hurricane. It still caused a lot of damage and destruction. But that's what one of the, I guess you could say, positives, right, that you could see would be that weakening right before landfall. Again, this is the latest forecast track from the National Hurricane Center. Now, what has happened in the last 24 hours? It's a little bit different. The biggest change since we last spoke yesterday was Ian projected to become a Category 4 hurricane at its peak intensity, the weakening upon landfall. But third, which I actually think is a little bit more important, is a slight track shift toward the west. This means multiple things. Areas in southern Florida have actually been taken out of the forecast cone from areas like southwest Florida and down toward Miami, been taken out of the forecast cone. Now, that does not mean that that can't go back if the teeter-tottering continues, but what we've noticed is a uh, track shift slightly west with not just the hurricane forecast track, but also model data, and things are really, really consistent especially for a storm that's still about multiple is about five days out through about Wednesday. But I'm going to expand this out further to show you what happens Wednesday and beyond. Then we have some tracks going completely out to sea, some going all the way to New Orleans. So there is still a level of uncertainty that we do have to monitor over the next few days. If the track shift further west continues, that could mean a lesser likely impact to central Florida and closer to the panhandle or even closer to areas like Alabama, Mississippi, and even coastal Louisiana. So there's still a lot of question marks to work out over the next few days. So we'll be keeping an eye on that. Something else that the track shift slightly west means is that right now the National Hurricane Center is tracking much further west upon the Cuba movement. And that would happen on Monday. So lesser time over land or even no time over land if the track shift west continues would mean a lesser opportunity 
for the terrain and the movement over land to help weaken the storm. So all these things play a factor. I do think that the track shift west and spending less time over land was probably a big reason why the National Hurricane Center did bump up the peak intensity to a Category 4 hurricane. So again, these are changes that we continue to monitor because if models were flip-flopping every single run, east-west, 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 you wouldn't pay as much attention to that. But when they're consistent, that's what you look for is consistency over and over again. And you know we'll continue to update you on this. So here's my latest thinking when it comes to the impact scenarios here in the Western Carolinas. First things first, this is still too early to have exact num you know, exact uh information, exact uh, logistics here. So definitely not a time to panic, just prepare. If you have friends and family in the state of Florida, I do. I moved here from Fort Myers it's in Southwest Florida. We were previously in the forecast cone. You just want to go ahead and tell folks, right, to not panic, just prepare, have a way to get alerts, have a way to get updates, have your hurricane kit in place. And if evacuation orders are issued for any state across Florida or even along the Gulf of Mexico uh, or even into the East Coast, to just heed those warnings, but we always tell folks not to leave, right? Unless you were told to, that's usually the safest option. A lot of times officials try to keep people off the roads if possible. So here's my latest thinking locally. I think that we have a much lesser chance, which is unfortunate, of seeing a complete turn out to sea. So I'm still keeping it on the docket here, but you can see I kind of faded it out to show you. The out to sea and no impacts is probably becoming less likely. I still think, the red and yellow are kind of a 50-50 shot of happening at this point. If the storm continues this westward track, that could mean a higher risk for the red shading. And they're kind of shaded right as our highest impact to lowest. So that could mean the potential for some localized flooding, especially up toward the mountains and foothills, and even isolated tornadoes and high winds. This happens a lot here locally, especially up toward those northern areas when we have a storm that makes landfall potentially in the panhandle of Florida or even in coastal Alabama, and it takes that kind of curve because that puts us on what's called the dirty side of the storm or the northeast quadrant. And oftentimes that's a higher risk for isolated severe weather. But also we know that up toward the mountains and foothills, especially with higher terrain, flash flooding can be a big problem. If folks were here in August of last year, August 17th, 2021, Tropical Depression Fred actually moved just west of us, and it caused the most uh, tornado warnings ever issued by Greensville Spartanburg. That's the National Weather Service office that covers the Charlotte area. Now, a lot of those were quick spin ups that it was hard to even know if they actually touched down, but it's just a good reminder, right, that we have to watch these storms closely. Um, the coastal track, the one shaded in yellow, would mean little to no impacts for us here in Charlotte and uh, up toward the west, up toward the mountains and foothills, but could see some coastal impacts there. And even with a slower storm or a weaker hurricane, we know that coastal areas like Myrtle Beach up toward Wilmington, the Outer Banks can still see impacts. Um, Myrtle Beach was actually my first uh, TV job. And, you know, even with a weaker storm, they can see impacts there. So we're keeping a close eye on both of these situations. But for now, I do think that the out to sea and uh, no impacts to the Carolinas is looking a little bit less likely. Of course, if that changes, we will continue to keep you updated. Uh, so thanks so much for joining us here for this update on what's going on in the tropics and of course our local weather. We have a reinforcing shot of cooler air coming after this cold front that's coming in today, bringing us that small chance of rain. That is going to keep us fall-like and looking really, really nice through Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday with a few more clouds Thursday, but still looking great. The changes would be Friday and beyond. If the storm slows down, that could mean Saturday and beyond. Uh, if it speeds up, it could change as well. So right now, we're just staying weather aware, not panicking, just preparing. And you can trust the WCNC Charlotte weather team to continue to keep you updated on any changes with this storm. Again, the latest forecast track comes out at 11 a.m. And you can trust that. Uh, I know Brad was remoting into the computer earlier, so I know he's keeping an eye on it. And so am I. And you can trust our team to keep you updated throughout the day. Uh, for now, have a safe, happy healthy Sunday ahead. Yes, we're seeing more clouds, but yes, the sun will come out at times throughout the day. And it is once again going to be a day with low humidity. But if you are going to be out and about, just keep an eye on the sky for some isolated showers. I still do though think that the risk for some thunderstorms is pretty low. So have a great day. And if you like fall like weather, we're going to see even more as we hit the middle part of the early middle part of the week. Have a great day, everyone.